Hey everyone, welcome back to another web hosting video tutorial on Mukesh's TechSpace. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about how to improve your website's security with HTTP security headers. So what are security headers? Uh, these are commands or directives configured for your website or configured on the web server that runs your website. These directives tell the client browsers on what is allowed and what isn't allowed for your website uh, in terms of code execution or in terms of security. Uh, this helps protect the client browsers as well as your website from attacks or uh, malicious code. So it provides a robust security all around um, when this is implemented. Here is another definition of HTTP security headers. And if you want to read more, I'll link to this website in the accompanying blog post on webhostingforbeginners.net. So in this video, we'll walk through setting up eight types of HTTP security headers on the Open Lightspeed web server. So without further ado, let's get started. so let's get started. I'm logged into my LightSail dashboard. I have a test server with Ubuntu on it. I've also installed the Open Lightspeed stack and I have a WordPress website installed with a sample theme and um, a test domain and SSL certificate as well. So this is what I'll be using for this video tutorial. If you are interested in setting up your own Open Lightspeed stack with WordPress. I have an in-depth tutorial that you may want to check out. I'll link to it right above here. It, you don't need to be on LightCell or you don't necessarily even need to have an Ubuntu Open Lightspeed setup. As long as you have a web hosting environment that gives you access to the HT access file or the web server's configuration file, you should be able to apply these security headers anywhere. Um, so, but the first thing we're going to do is run a report and see what our current setup provides in terms of the security headers, which security headers are configured. So I'll go over to this website, uh, securityheaders.com. And if you paste in the, your site website's URL and hit scan, it should produce a report indicating what security headers are installed or not installed. And you can see in my case, I have a F grade because none of the headers are configured. And that's what we will start to do. Um, to do those for my setup, I'm going to log into the um, Open Lightspeed Web Admin Console, head on over to the virtual host, click on the WordPress virtual host, and then come over to the context menu tab. And then in the context list, there should be one entry and then hit edit in here, come down to where it says the header operations section. And this is where we will be adding all of the uh, HTTP security headers. The first one will be X frame options. Uh, adding this header directive helps avoid clickjacking attacks and ensures that the website content is not embeddable into other websites. Basically, this prevents the iframe tag usage. And so I'm going to copy this line and paste it in here. And I'll have all of these header commands or directives available on the accompanying a blog post on my website, webhostingforbeginners.net. So you can copy uh, the commands to follow along with this tutorial. So we'll add this here. Now you can add all eight of them all together and then hit save and restart the server. But for the purpose of this tutorial and walking through how these changes affect the scan results, I'm going to do those one by one. So I'm going to do the first one here, hit save, and then restart open light speed give that a few seconds and then if we come back to our scan results we should see some changes so if i hit scan again you'll see here x frame options is now green so we've gotten one taken care of the second http security header we're going to configure is strict 
transport security. So come back over to the Lightspeed web admin and then come down here into the header operations section and then copy and paste this header directive. Now the strict transport security header, this basically forces communication using HTTPS instead of HTTP. And it informs browsers that the site should only be accessed using HTTPS. And any future attempts to access it using HTTP should automatically be converted to HTTPS as well. So this is what that enables. Now, if you do not have an HTTP or an SSL certificate on your website, then do not add this header um, directive. And then restart. Okay, so if we run our scan one more time, you'll see now strict transport security is enabled. The next thing we're going to do is content security policy security header. So let's come back over to the web admin, click on edit for my context, and we're going to apply the content security policy. Now, this security policy is the most comprehensive. However, it is one that has to be implemented uniquely uh, for every website. Basically, it's unique for your website based on your website's setup. Uh, there generally isn't a one size fits all approach. However, I found a website that provides a set of generic rules for WordPress based websites, and this helps guard against cross site scripting attacks. And so this is the header directive for content security policy that I got from that website. I'll link to it in the blog post so that you can reference it and read along uh, the other uh, options that may be available for the content security policy. Um, but basically, the head, this header is setting the allowed sources for fonts, images, and scripts, and of course, styles. For each of these, a secure HTTP connection is required. The only exception is to allow data URIs as a source for fonts and images, because those could be loaded from an external source. So we're going to hit save, restart our server. And then if we go and scan the website now, we should have content security policy. And as you can see, our grade is improving. Now we have a few more to go. So let's go ahead and get on to the next one. This will be X content type options. This header allows you to avoid MIME type sniffing by letting the browser know that MIME types are deliberately configured on this server. So we are going to, again, go into the edit for our context, header operations section, and then add the X content type options directive. Hit save, restart, and then let's test our scan again. X content type options is now enabled and our grade has improved to A, but we do have a couple of more security policies to go uh, for this test. So our next security policy number five will be the refer policy. And this controls how much refer information should be included with request. This as with the content security policy will be your preference or unique to your website. Um, I'll link to documentation that will explain the options, but here's a common security directive that gets uh, that you can apply for the refer policy. So back into the context header operations section, we'll just have no refer when downgrade. Hit save and restart the server and we'll do a scan again and the refer policy is applied. The next one will be feature policy or permissions policy. Basically, the feature policy header is now being renamed to permissions policy. So what we'll do is apply both of them uh, to take care of this last one here. Um, this header uh, allows a site to control which features and APIs can, that you know can be used in the browser. You can add or modify the options here based on your site's needs, but I'm just going to give you a couple of samples. So let's go back into our web admin context and then the header operations section. 
and the two policies we're going to apply. Um, here it's the feature policy, and then we'll also apply the permissions policy. And you can see here, it's we're going to enable geolocation for self, vibrate none, and we'll do the same thing for permissions policy. Again, you'll want to change this based on what features or APIs your website needs to um, be rendered correctly. Well, we're just going to do this, hit save, restart, do a scan one more time. And we now have an A+. All of our security headers are now implemented for this website. Now we're going to do a couple of more security um, headers. These are optional and you don't necessarily have to have them, uh, but it's good to just install them and get them configured or enable them. So the first one will be X permitted cross domain policies. So this is the seventh security policy or security header. And this header, uh, you can implement this header to instruct the browser on how to handle the request over a cross domain. By implementing this header, you restrict loading your site's assets from other domain to avoid resource abuse. So what you'll want is this directive right here. And then the uh, last security header, we're gonna go ahead and install that here uh, right now. And this is the XSS protection. So this header, uh, security header helps prevent cross-site scripting attacks. Um, it was primarily used for older browsers and really for modern browsers nowadays, it's unnecessary, um, especially when you in implement the security policy, a, a very good security policy, you don't need this one. It's good to just go ahead and have it in case you have visitors using an older browser that not understand the content security policy. So let me go ahead and paste this one in here and then hit save and restart, okay? And we don't have those tests being done here. So even if you scan, it's still going to uh, be kept at A plus because we've applied all the other ones that are needed for this report. There are some other sites. Uh, so if you go to Google, and search for um, security header uh, scan or something like that, you'll get uh, uh, plenty of them. You'll have, of course, the security headers that we just tried. SERPworks.com has its own tool that you can use to scan your uh, uh, security headers. And then there's several other ones as well. So after applying all of these security headers, and if you go back to your website and it looks broken like this, it's likely that some one or many of those directives that we enabled restricted some parts of your website because it wasn't coded uh, to adhere to those security po um, policies. So you'll have to go in here, probably go into the inspect tool and find out what's causing those errors and resolve them. So it's probably good to apply this to a non-production website first. And then once you've figured everything out and clean, uh, fixed everything, then you can apply this to production. But as you can see here, as soon as I refreshed my website, we have a lot of errors because the sample, of course, my site has a lot of sample content, probably from, uh, external sites or from um, HTTP only URLs. Um, so I'm going to have to go ahead and fix all of this to get this site looking like the way it was before I applied it. So just keep that in mind that you want to apply these on a non-live site so that if there are issues because of those security policies, you have a chance to fix them before they are on live. The other thing you can do is is modify the security policies to be a little bit more open rather than restrict. So all of these security policies can be tweaked. I'll link to some documentation that walks through the various options for each of these security policies or security headers. So you'll want to refer to that if you need to make changes for your specific website. All right, let's go ahead and head on over to the wrap up. All right, well, that's it for this tutorial. Now, keep in mind, some of these headers, security headers can be implemented with a WordPress plugin, but it may be better to just put these in the web server configuration or in your HT access configuration so that you don't have to worry about yet another WordPress plugin installed on your website. If you found this video tutorial useful, give it a thumbs up, like the video. If you have any comments or questions, put them down in the comments below. If there are other types of security headers that you have found useful, for your website, please do share them down in the comments below as well. 
Um, if these are the types of video tutorials that interest you, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to the notification icon so that you get notified when I post more videos like these. Uh, share this video out to others who may also benefit from this uh, information. And uh, don't forget, I do have 75 plus video tutorials on website hosting and optimization. So be sure to check those out. That will help you in your journey of hosting your own website. Thank you for watching and until the next video tutorial, take care.